Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm going to be analyzing Jaclyn Hill's announcement video for her Morphe collab, the one titled Get Ready With Me Opening Up Vulnerable. But I'm going to be doing it in a way that may be a little different than what you're expecting. So if you like talking about makeup and the beauty community slash industry just as much as I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified of all future content I post on Tuesdays and Fridays and try to do bonus content whenever I can. So this video came out and my friend told me I had to watch it all the way through and it was very interesting, but I was watching it going like, wow, this is a masterclass on how to play a manipulative character. If you're new to my channel or don't know, I am an actress. I'm trying to be an actress. I went to acting school and everything and I am fascinated with manipulative, bitchy, mean girl type of characters. So I want to break down this video as if I am doing a character study on Jaclyn Hill, breaking apart the scene and breaking apart the tactics she's using to reach her objective. Because there are many different ways to act. Everyone has their own style. But one method that really helps me and is really what I learned in school is that every character in every scene has an objective they're trying to reach and obstacles they're trying to overcome and the scene is them using tactics to get what they want. So I'm going to analyze this video with that framing. So this is going to be more of an analytical video looking at the how slash what she is doing rather than my personal thoughts and feelings on I guess the morality of this video she posted. So if you would like more of a ranty style video, Smoky Glow already said everything. I would say I'll have her video reaction to this video linked down below. I, I agree with everything she said. Like she nailed it. I don't need to just remake that video. So we're going this route instead. So if we're looking at this character, Jaclyn Hill, and we're looking at this video as the scene she's in, what is her objective? It seems fairly obvious. Her objective is to get you to buy her Morphe palette. Get you, the viewer, to buy the palette. Her obstacle, I'm going to say, is her reputation. She has a reputation for not putting out good quality products and collabs with other brands, with her own brand. She has a bad history of this. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the tactics she uses to get what she wants and overcome her obstacles. Now, when I was going through this, there were a ton more examples of pretty much everything I'm going to list in this video. So this is not a comprehensive list. I could probably break down this video like minute by minute of look at all these different tactics she's using, but I don't think any of us want to be here for like six hours while I do that. So I just pulled things that I thought were poignant examples of the different methods she's using to get her goal, obtain her objective, and you could probably apply something on this list to just about anywhere in the video and realize what she's doing. So let's go ahead and get rolling with this. Let's start at the top. My notes are down here, so that's why I keep looking down. Let's go ahead and dive right on it. Life, because let's get real, I have not connected with you guys in so long, like as an actual like friendship connection. So she starts very, very early on in the video with trying to establish a personal connection. She's trying to make you feel like she is talking to you, the individual, not you, the mass of people watching this video once she edits and uploads this, when she's actually just talking to a camera like I am right now. She's really playing into the parasocial relationship. And even later in the video, she says something about a one-on-one -on -one with her viewers where she is not having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with anyone at any point in this video, her video has over 2 million views. That's not a one-on-one. -on -one. She doesn't know you, the human being watching this. But still, the first tactic is establishing that personal connection because then you, the viewer, you feel like, hey, we're friends. We have this relationship. She may not know me personally, but I mean, I'm her fan. Doesn't she kind of know me though? I feel invested and like I'm friends with this person. I just could not believe how fake people are out there. Like just the fakeness that I just witnessed with my own two, two eyes just put me into such a bad headspace. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere. Cause I'm just like, 
these people are so two-faced and I'm just not, I'm not about that. The next tactic I wanna talk about is how she is distancing herself from fake people. Talking about how she doesn't like that, she's not like that because if you look at her obstacle, her reputation, is kind of for being pretty fake. So she needs to create distance between that reputation and herself as a person, even though, you know what, I'm just, I'm kind of trying to keep shade to a minimum. So she is distancing herself from the part of her reputation that is being a fake person. Like, this is a prime example that I want to give to you guys about what I'm saying. Like, I can't say anything and I feel like afraid to talk and I feel afraid to get on camera and like say anything or speak my mind because when Demi Lovato performed at the Grammys just last week, I got several tweets and a handful of DMs from people saying that they thought that we looked alike during her performance. And I responded to someone on Twitter who said that and I said, I'll take that as a compliment. And then I put heart emojis, right? For 24 hours, girls were coming at me saying things like, well, why wouldn't you take it as a compliment? What do you mean? I'm just saying I take it as a compliment. Like I even responded to one girl cause I was like, huh? And girls were saying how, oh, well, yeah, she wouldn't take you. She, she's saying that because Demi Lovato has gained weight and Jacqueline always talks about how fat shaming is so wrong. But then when it comes to her, she's got an attitude and I'm like, what? Like, wh what is going on? Like literally I said, I will take that as a compliment. Demi Lovato is freaking gorgeous. Like I didn't even think about her weight. It's like at the point where I feel like I could look at a girl and say, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful. And someone would be like, well, why wouldn't she look beautiful? Are you not a feminist? Are you shaming her? I'm like, ah, like that. It's literally that aggressive. Ooh, the next one I found really interesting because she is belittling criticism. She's making it really hard to criticize her because she's basically saying like, I am so scrutinized that even things that are fine to do saying, I'll take that as a compliment. Most people would find that to be a fine response to being compared to looking like any celebrity. I'll take it as a compliment. I just got a comment recently saying that if I dyed my hair, I'd look like Amelia Clark on Game of Thrones. Like, heck yeah, I take that as a compliment. And that's not a weird thing to say. So by giving an example of something that is something most people would find way overly critical, she is grouping all of the negative, all of the hate she gets into something she can easily dismiss as haters rather than as actual, logical, critical arguments of her actions that should be listened to because some of her actions have been questionable. She doesn't have to take personal responsibility for that. And if anyone calls out this video, then they can be immediately dismissed as, oh, you're just a hater. You're just being too harsh or too critical because you don't like Jaclyn Hill, not because you actually have things that are, have value, like are actual constructive criticisms of things she is doing as a human being, like trying to manipulate her audience. Comments on it because it's like, I just want to add to that positivity. You know, I want them to have one extra comment of kindness because I know that everybody gets hate. So it's like, why not add some happiness in there. So I just encourage you guys as my followers, as my Hillsters, my Jack Pack, just to do that. Like in 2020, when you have a nice thought, comment it and say it. If you're staying in a Starbucks and you like someone's shirt or they have beautiful cheekbones or whatever it is, say it. I compliment people all the time in public. Sometimes I feel like it makes them uncomfortable, but I don't care. And it makes people feel good. It lightens up their day. So I just wanna encourage my followers to start doing that in 2020, because I think that it could be very impactful. If you just compliment someone like a random stranger in public, tweet me and tell me and I will favorite your tweet. I will heart your tweet. I will support you in that because I think that's freaking awesome. So many people are so nasty. Let's be kind. In this clip, she is saying something agreeable to get you on her side. Whether or not you like Jaclyn Hill, if you're coming at this from a critical standpoint or as a fan standpoint, the statement, the world is mean spread kindness is a pretty generally agreed on thing. Like, that's a good thing. I support that statement. And that's what she's doing. She's saying something so generally approved of that it brings you over to her side, even if it's just for a minute on this one thing. It's getting you to agree with her on this issue, so maybe you'll be more likely to agree with her on the next thing she says too. That's a manipulation tactic. And pretty soon after that, she goes right in for the kill of any manipulation. The number one tool any manipulative character uses is pity. I know that my weight has been a topic of discussion for a few months now and 
I have put on quite a few pounds since my lipsticks launched. If we're just gonna be totally honest, that's when it started. I have put on, God, close to 30 pounds this year and like the past eight months. And um, there is a reason for it. And I wanna talk about it because I can't post a picture or a video or an Instagram story without people talking about how fat I am and especially my face. Like I just get so much hate for my face. Like your face is so fat, what's wrong with you? And so many people accuse me of getting fillers and Botox. You need to calm down with the fillers and the Botox. And I've never addressed this in a serious way. I've made little tweets and comments before like, it's not fillers, like calm down. But I've never actually talked about what's really going on. Because pity works. And being so picked apart for her weight and her looks is something that I think pretty much all women can relate to and agree with is wrong. People accusing her and criticizing her for that, I'm not for, I don't support that because it is wrong. And I do kind of feel bad for her that she got so much hate for that because that is not what she deserves hate for. She deserves hate and not even hate, but constructive criticism and disapproval for her actions, the things she's done wrong, the fact that she's been a shady person. You know, like th there's a list of things that are logic. There's a word that doesn't want to come to my brain, but valid reasons to criticize her. And by getting you to pity her for things that most women and still the majority of cosmetic purchasers are women can relate to. And maybe I felt bad about in themselves. That's a great way to get pity. Not why? Would I ever put out a product like that and destroy my name? And I know that people think, oh, she did it for money. They're old and expired and she did it for money. You guys, I'm just gonna be honest with you, like on a business end of things, I did not make a penny, not one cent on that launch. I lost a ton of money. I did not make one dime on that launch. And then in the middle of getting pity points, she ties it to financial struggles. Jaclyn Hill is not someone struggling with her finances. She is a multimillionaire, like she's fine. But by saying how, oh, she lost money from this, what can we do to help with that problem? Well, make her next launch a success. That'll sure help her financially. It's not a direct, well, A equals B, but just planting a little seed for later. It, it's just a nice little, sprinkle of a touch in there. And that's something I think she really did well in this video of subtleties are so good that Jaclyn Hill, the character of Jaclyn Hill as played by Jaclyn Hill, is really good at it. She's really good at manipulation because of these subtleties. Because unless you're really going through this video with a fine tooth comb, kind of like I did, you're probably not gonna catch that, just that little connection. And I don't know if she did it consciously or not, but it's a good touch for a manipulative character. So if you're trying to play a manipulative character, really look at their dialogue and see where just those, those little dashes of extra you can throw in. It can be very helpful. And then in this video, she switches to her struggles with alcohol and substance abuse for self-medicating. Now, that is definitely a serious problem and I'm not here saying that she didn't actually struggle with that and that she's not trying to get better or any of that. I'm simply looking at the context of this video. And in this video, she is not really warning against it or speaking out. Here are the dangers of doing this. If you really listen to how she's talking about it, it's still trying to get that pity points because she's still like, things were so bad. Here are all the things that were so wrong that I turned to alcohol. It was just such a messy year, you guys. And at the end of the day, to cope with my anxiety and my depression, I turned to alcohol and started drinking to fix what I was feeling mentally, but I've never been a heavy drinker. I've always just like drank with my friends for fun, socially, you know, th that's it. And I honestly don't even like being drunk. That's not what it's about. But this year I discovered, oh, when you have a couple of drinks, your brain just kind of relaxes and my brain just goes crazy. My anxiety gets so bad, you guys, that I uncontrollably throw up. Last year, I would say there was a couple months period where I was probably throwing up five days a week, just uncontrollably. I would wake up in the morning and I would just be so anxious and so miserable that I would run to the bathroom. Sometimes I wouldn't even make it to the toilet or the sink because of my anxiety. I would just, I would cry so hard and get myself so worked up that I would puke and it was awful. 
it, it was just dark and I turned to alcohol. And so when I would start to get anxiety, I just immediately am like, all right, uh, I need a shot. I need a drink. I need a cocktail. Like I need something like I just numb it. Like instead of using Xanax or Valium or an Ativan or whatever prescription drug, I have been using alcohol to self-medicate. Rather than being like, hey, I turn to this. Don't do this. She has a platform with millions of people watching and she really had her moment that she could really speak on that and maybe do some good in the world. And instead she talks about how she had so much anxiety she was throwing up. And yes, that is a valid issue, but the fact that all of this was leading to buy my palette makes it manipulative. I would have no issues with this video if it was not a sales pitch, if there was no product at the end. If she was just talking about her struggles, that's totally fine. That's even admirable, I think, because it can be hard to come on the internet and lay your cards out for millions of people, but that's not what she's doing. And I would like to point out in said product, there's an eyeshadow shade named Tipsy Girl. I mean, okay, I guess. But also what's interesting is you're seeing the character self-manipulate. She's justifying her substance abuse, not just to us as the audience, but to herself as well. Cause she's saying, well, look at how much I was going through, which valid people do turn to substance abuse when they're at a really low point in their life. And I'm not saying that Jacqueline Hill was not at a really low point in her life and turned to substance abuse. She's just not speaking on it in a serious own your shit kind of way and speaking out against it and the dangers of it. And she even says that if you do what she did, it's not an addiction or alcoholism. So that's some pretty interesting insights into the mental state of this character. I think she truly has not fully embraced the gravity of her issues. And the next thing I want to talk about is how she anticipates criticisms. I see on social media a lot, especially the past year, a lot of people saying, oh, you only come to YouTube when you want to sell something. Oh, you're only present on social media when you want to sell something. All you care about is the money. Like you just want to sell something, right? I mean, those of you who know me know that that's not true, especially after everything that I just got done telling you, you know why I've been so absent as of recently. It, I'm not here just to sell something. She knows what her audience is thinking. She's been criticized before for coming onto YouTube only when she has a product to sell. So she's explaining that, yes, while I am doing the same thing again, you should trust me this time that this time is going to be different because X, Y, and Z, which maybe, but that anticipation of the person she is manipulating thought process and what may take them out, like what may cause doubts in her argument. She's anticipating that and arguing against it preemptively. And finally, I think probably the most important bit, if we are analyzing this character of Jaclyn Hill, it is this sentence. At the end of the day, I have dreamt of creating product since I ever dreamt of creating a YouTube channel. Product is my number one passion. Makeup is my number one passion. And I started YouTube because of that very thing. And YouTube has made me able to create product. Like she showed you her hand, showed you, this is what I'm doing. Here are my motivations. She just wants to make product. That's why she's on YouTube to make and by extension, sell product. She is capitalizing on the parasocial relationship created by YouTube and social media to sell product. That is her end goal. That is what she wants. And here she is doing it and doing a masterful job at it. Like I am, like I've been looking at this as a character, this is brilliant. This is exactly the kind of character I would want to play because it's so juicy and multi-layered and there is actual things to pity her about, but she's using them in a way that's really gross and in a movie fascinating, but in real life, a disgusting thing to do. And the fact that right there, 
She did it. She showed her cards. Like, that's the moment in the movie where everyone goes, huh. But we are not watching the movie. We're the other character. We're the person she is working on to try to get her objective from. Because we have to decide to give it to her. We are the other character in the scene. We're not the audience. And that's why I think people are not picking up on this when it's right there. She said it. Her main drive, her main goal is to make products. And how do you continue to make products? You sell them. She is just a saleswoman giving us a pitch in this video. And the rest of the video really is just the loose ends of the sales pitch being tied up. There are brief bits of trying to get pity, trying to explain away concerns, and just make a sales pitch about how amazing the product is. She's also asking you to support her as a friend would support another friend, not as an influencer. She doesn't know you. She doesn't know me. But she's still trying to get us to act as if me and her, you and her, have been best friends forever. Like, if my best friend put out an eyeshadow palette, honestly, she better send it to me for free. But you bet I would support her. You bet I would buy it just because I was so happy for her. That's what she's trying to get you to do because at the end of the day, it's still reaching her goal. It's reaching her objective. It's getting you to buy the thing. She said it. That is why she is on YouTube. She's using relatability. She's using pity. She's explaining away doubts and concerns you may have. And it's how she's working on the other character, which is us. So us, the other character, has to break it down like an actor would do with their own script. And I did give myself this script. I, I wanted to do a lot longer chunk, but I would rather do a short bit well than try to really rush and just do it okay-ish. So before I filmed this video, I, when I was doing my makeup, did a monologue from this scene. Now it is edited from the closed captions on the YouTube video, which were automatically generated. So I had to edit them a little bit to make them flow and make sense. So it may not be exactly word for word, but for the most part it is. And here is my audition to play Jaclyn Hill in her life story, I guess. I know my weight has been a topic of discussion for the past few months, and I have put on quite a few pounds since my lipsticks launched. If we're going to be totally honest, that's when it started. And I've put on, God, close to 30 pounds this past year and like the past eight months. But I want to address why that is because I can't post a picture or a video or an Instagram story without people talking about how fat I am and especially my face. I get so much hate for my face. Like, your face is so fat, what's wrong with you? And so many people think it's fillers and Botox, you know? Calm down to the fillers and Botox. And I've never addressed this in a serious way. Like, I've made little tweets and stuff, like, it's not fillers and Botox, but I want to sit down and address what's really been going on. So, of course, it is a work in progress. I've only had it for a couple of days, but I had a lot of fun with this, and I would love to learn more of this video as a longer monologue. I'm going to learn more of that monologue and put it in my reel, honestly. Like, it's such a good monologue as an actor.